everybody. Welcome to a video. Uh, we're going to talk about some cool, cool topics. Uh, and then we're going to open up some packs. So I hope you'll stick around for the ride. We're going to talk about two cards you should buy right now. Talk about the thing that Mark Rosewater said where Wizards of the Coast missed the point with Planeswalkers. Whoops. They kind of messed the Planeswalker thing up. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Pack Club and open up some packs. So... I hope you're here. Oh, D. Cameron, what's up? This is your pack. We're opening your pack. Here it is right here. That's your pack right there. See that down there? We're going to open up that pack for you, Derek. That's your weekly pack club pack. And then I'm going to open a couple other packs for fun. All right, let's, uh, before we're going to open the packs though, and I'm sorry, Derek, if you have to see the pack opening right now, let me know and I'll open it. We'll just, we'll just kill all the, uh, you know, all the suspense and we'll open it right now if that's what you want to do. Heck yeah. All right. Well, rip, rip our stream. <laughs> right on. All right. Let's, let's do it. MTG advent. Yeah. I like that idea. Okay. Let's open up Derek's pack. We're going to open some more packs later, uh, but we'll open up Derek's pack. So he doesn't have to wait around and listen to me talk about all this stuff. So we're going to, let's switch up. Let's go, let's go to the pack opening business here. Here we go. All right. This one's for Derek. Derek, uh, I'm good today. You're good today? All right. No, no, no. Let's open it up, bro. Let's open it up. You you already got me excited. We're already on the pack opening screen. All right. Let's send energy to Derek. This is Derek's weekly pack club pack. Okay. So I'll talk about pack club a little bit later. Okay. But we're going to talk about some other stuff first. So let's open this up. Thank you for subscribing to pack club, Derek. I hope you get something good. Your last pack was pretty nuts. Uh, it was pretty nuts. It's just a standard pack, but you had a, you had a, you had a foil, uh, rare, and then you also had uh, a nice rare as well. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. All right, we're in the uncommons. Come on. All right, Yasharn, Implaceable Earth, and a Swamp. Yasharn, good commander card. Good commander card. I'm going to see if I bring this down just a touch. Just a scotch. All right, there we go. Okay. Amirius Call. That's right. It was a mythic rare. You got a, a mythic rare. So thank you for, for, for being part of Pack Club. I appreciate it, Derek. I hope that one's cool. Um, go for it. Good vibes. Yeah. All right. We're going to catch up with chat in just a minute. I'll explain Pack Club to you if you want to know what the heck that is. And, uh, and we'll get going with that. Uh, let's see. Also, somebody followed. It looks like random guy has followed. Thank you so much for the follow. And uh, I don't know what's going on with our alert box. Where's our alert box? Uh, maybe it's it's maybe it's under. It's under everything. So my bad. Let's see if we can get our alerts going. That was not a bad pack, right? Not a bad pack. Okay, let's talk. Uh, I know some of you here are here for the picks, right? You want to know what cards should I buy, right? We're going to talk about what cards you should buy. What I've been doing is I've been looking at Commander Legends for my Commander War Chest. Okay, it's kind of... It, you know, I'm not going to go into that either. It's basically like a commander cube, essentially, um, but you don't draft it. Okay. So anyways, I've been looking at cards for that, and I wanted to get the etched foils because the etched foils were super cheap. And like, look at like, look at this Eureka, you know, the, the judge foil used to be like $25. The Eureka is like seven bucks, right? So what I started to find is that some of the foils, some of the etch foils that I was trying to buy were starting to firm up in price. And what I mean by that is like, I've been like kind of waiting for stuff to bottom out so I can get the cheapest thing. And the first day of release, everything was super cheap. These etch foils were like under a dollar, like so many of them, just because people wanted to just process them. And what we started to see is things firming up, okay? And I'm going to talk about two of them that firmed up and that are looking actually pretty, pretty uh, sparse here. So the first one is, let me see if I can spell it right. Uh, maybe we'll just look through here. Maybe we'll just find it. We'll just, uh, we'll just locate it this way, maybe. Let's see. Where are you at? Oh, right here. Arami the Dead Tide. Okay. Look at this. Look at the price on this one. This is an uncommon etched foil. Okay. Uncommon etched foil. It's already five bucks. Okay. It's, it's already five bucks and that starts to go up quickly. Okay. And look here. This is important right here. Look how many things are available. Only two pages of results in that one. 
only two pages of results. So what that means is like, like, let me give you a, let me give you an example. Like if you go, this is an uncommon. Okay. So keep that in mind. Like if you go to like this one, right? The 23 cent one, right? Look how many pages of results you have. What's the last page? Let's go. Seven. You have seven. Okay. Now, if you go back to the other one, there's only two. And this is like, this is like $5 versus 25 cents. So what I'm seeing is, and, and if you look at EDH rec, this kind of backs it up. Look at these top for the past week. These are the top commanders. Okay. Obeka, Arami, and uh, Ghent. Okay. These are the top ones. And then you get into these also, Yurok and uh, Sakashima. So there are some commander legends, commanders like breaking in into the, into the top commanders of the past week on EDH rec. And of course this one, you can see there's a lot of pressure here on the price. There's a lot of pressure on the, on the supply and the price is going to go up. Um, now commander uh, the, the collector boosters are really starting to dwindle in supply. So there's not a big resupply coming. Okay. So I expect Unless this is a bunch of speculators buying this out, which I don't think it is because you see the actual demand here, right here, number two, right? Um, then I expect this to get even higher in price. So I would say if you can find a good deal on one of these and you need it for whatever, like if I needed it for my commander war chest or whatever, I would say right now is a good time to buy this. And if you didn't guess, the other one that I wanted to point out was Obeka. Obeka has gotten a lot of steam look at it's already up to like ten dollars and i expect it to follow a similar trend as the other one even go up higher obeka now is a um is a rare so it's it's going to be slightly more rare um i'm not actually sure of how the rarity plays out because in those collector's boosters you always get one uncommon and one rare or mythic right so I'm not sure about the difference between the rare and the uncommons because there are etched foils in regular boxes too. So whatever the distribution is there. But I like Obeka and, and kind of like a bonus choice as well. Obeka, you don't see the, the pressure on the supply as much. There's still five results here. Um, but with it being the top commander of this week, the most interesting one, the thing that, that's driving a lot of prices, things like Final Fortune, Blade of Selves, all these different cards are going up, you know, um, because of this card. I expect the etch foil to also kind of raise a little bit. Um, some dark horses are like Gant here and Eureka. These can be found for like a doll. Uh, this one is like three bucks right now. Uh, uh, your lock, sorry, not Eureka. Your lock is like three dollars and Gant is like a dollar fifty. So these are etched foils. So those are kind of dark horses. I think that would be an interesting thing to pick up. And uh, something interesting to pick up. There's a lot of noise going on upstairs. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't needed. <laughs> so there's your two, Obeka and Arami, okay? And then uh, also another thing I wanted to point out, uh, just one more thing on pricing, and then we'll talk about this Mark Rosewater thing, um, is uh, Marchesa. Uh, the etch foil Marchesa, uh, when, it, when it came out, it was $5 when it first hit the, the market. It's been slowly creeping. Yesterday it was $10. And now it's $11. We still have plenty of supply, but this is starting to recover very fast. And if I can make a general note about this stuff, a lot of these cards are recovering fast, okay? A lot of the etched foils and the extended art cards are recovering. Even the, the, uh, even the Jeweled Lotus, which hit 50, or, or even it started to hit 50. Let me see if I can... Let me see if I can spell it. If I can spell it, we can do some more investigation. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it started to hit 50, but now look, it's recovering $66. It's going to land in the 70 area, 65 to 70, right? And um, so people are talking about, oh, we haven't re reached peak supply and blah, blah, blah. And oh, yeah, those cards are going to continue to drop. I think Commander Legends is starting to turn the corner because we can see in those edge foils a lot of pressure on the on the supply. Same thing with these uh, with these kind of cards. Look at Hull Breacher. What turned out to be one of the like top rares in the set, right? Twenty five dollars, a very healthy, very healthy price, you know. So 
Uh, so yeah, so stuff is starting to turn the corner. Won't there be another supply of regular Commander Legends packs? Right. So there will be more regular packs, right? So first of all, there already a resupply already kind of happened, right? Because there was the pre-release, initial pre-release um, supply. So stores usually get like 30 to 60 boxes for pre-release. They sell those into the market and then you start to see prices start to dive. Okay. Uh, that's and that's when mass box openings are happening, right? So, so with the mass box openings happening, you see the price diving because people are chasing the bottom, and then um, you also see uh, so release comes Friday, the Friday comes with the release, and that's when the second wave of stuff from the distributors comes to stores. So then the stores, that's when they're selling all these booster boxes. And when some stores who cannot pre pre sell are starting to put their singles on the market and stuff starts to get pressured even, even lower. Okay. N now there's going to be like a, a resupply where everybody has sold through their inventory and now they're rebuying stuff from distributors to come in, you know, a month later or whatever. So there will be more product, but this is not, this is not like a standard booster box. And the reason I say that is because the standard booster box is meant to serve as standard. This is a commander set. So it services commander and commander is the biggest format. And so we can't think of it in the same terms as other booster boxes because like like brother's saying, $105 uh, draft boosters is a thing. There's no way that these single prices hold. There's no way that $105 draft booster holds. That's not going to hold. And so you're saying, hey, the booster price is going to stay the same and all these singles are going to go down. No, that's not what's going to happen because the supply is going to get eaten up by all the commander players because the, the commander demand is so huge that it's going to crush this supply. And what it's going to do is drive the price of boxes up. You're going to see something like, like similar to Battle Bond where Battle Bond had um, the Battle Bond lands in it. And they were $100 booster boxes, okay? And because of those lands, everything went up, right? The, the, the box went up because those lands were hitting like $15 a piece. And it's the same thing. Why? Because commander players wanted them, okay? Now, was the print run the same? Probably not. I would, it's like, there's two things, right? Like in a, in a regular world, in a non-COVID world, the print runs would not be the same, right? Because they would obviously print more commander legends than battle bond. But... In a COVID world, maybe they're not so different. I don't know. But I predict that this set is going to be probably the best-selling set, but by the same token, is going to have the most demand put on it. And so uh, the supply is going to get eaten up pretty quickly. And I think things are turning the corner right now. I think things are already turning the corner. What's up, Will? Welcome to the stream. And so that's my opinion. Uh, of course, everybody else has a different kind of opinion. Uh, I don't think the restock will be enough to to beat the prices down into the ground. And as soon as these cards prove their price, as soon as I'm selling $22 hall breachers or $25 hall breachers, like I'm not really going to be in a hurry to put them down lower than 25 bucks. And, and store owners are not going to also be in a hurry for that because why, you know, you can see already jewel Lotus is already going up. And in this, in this period where like you want to re re recapture the money that you spent as a store owner, like, why are you messing around like with $65? The reason why is because they keep selling out underneath. When cards sell out at the lower price, you have to raise them so you can keep the stock. You have to keep, to keep them in stock, you have to raise the price. And so what you're seeing on some of these like Hull Breacher, Jeweled Lotus, the Etch Foils, you're starting to see people restock at higher prices because the other ones sold. So that to me is telling me that first of all, supply is being um, devoured in those areas, those specific cards that I, that I pointed out. And that um, that they're going to hold prices and things are looking good for the set. So speaking of which, we are going to open some Commander Legends packs in a little bit. So I uh, hope you guys will hang out for that. All right, let me catch up with chat and then we'll go on to our next topic about the Rose Mark Rosewater thing. Um, and we'll talk about some little bit of Twitter stuff. All right. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who's here hanging out, just chatting. I appreciate it. Um, so weekly, I want to open packs for people who are in pack club, but to this today, we only have one pack to open. So we opened it. It was Derek's pack. 
Uh, thank you, Derek, for hanging out and for being in Pack Pluck Club. So I figured, hey, instead of just opening a pack, um, let's open a couple packs and let's also talk about some weekly magic topics. So it'll give you some entertainment, some things to, to think about, and also... Um, I will fulfill my duty as opening pack club. Now, as pack club expands and more people join, maybe I might have to break them into two segments or whatever. Um, or maybe I'll just do pack club if you guys don't really care about uh, the other stuff. Because <laughs> who cares, right? Maybe some of you guys don't want to hear me talk. But again, I just want to thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate to see a bunch of familiar faces, brother, uh, Ben, you know, Derek, uh, KG, what's up? Uh, I shipped out your card that you won today so um hope you get it soon and uh, and will as well thank you will for being here so appreciate y'all being here um nobody's cracking jew lotuses though not seeing many open yeah it's a, it's a, it's a mythic rare it's a mythic rare what is pack club okay i'll give you a quick uh description of pack club uh basically uh pack club is it's a subscription service and what you do is you can subscribe to one of three tiers okay so you can get a standard pack like um like one of these right uh one of these little uh, zendikar rising packs you can get a premium pack which would be like commander legends or like uh, modern horizons or something like that or you can get a epic pack which would be a collector booster or a um a collector booster or i'm allowing people to open the box toppers from Zendikar Rising, right? So if we have a sealed box topper, instead of your collector booster, you can open the, the box topper. And what I do is I open it on screen. So I'll open it for you like this. Obviously, it'll be a bigger screen where you can see what I'm opening. And then I send you the cards, right? So like, um, you know, if you open something great, obviously you get it. It was your pack. You paid for it. So <laughs> the first rule of pack club is you don't talk about pack club. <laughs> that's a different, that's a different kind of club, man. That's a, this is a different kind of club. So if you're interested in signing up for pack club, um, you can choose to have it done weekly or you can have it done monthly. So you could just get a, a pack every month or two packs every month or three packs, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's kind of a flexible thing, and it helps me to do pack opening streams without um, having the front, the capital to front, right? It makes it so that I don't have to put a whole bunch of money forward so that we can open cards. It's an exciting thing. It kind of reminds me of like a an LGS feeling where we're all hanging out, we're opening cards together, and it's just fun. It's just fun. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in. I, I think this will. I think this will direct you to the products. Uh, and then I'll give a little um, a little explanation here. So like if you want if you want to buy a pack. So today after I'm done talking, we're gonna open a couple packs for fun. If you want to buy a pack, you can buy a pack here. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing is like we you don't even have to be in pack club. You could just say hey, open me a pack and send me the goods um, right here. So there's a link there. And those who are watching on YouTube. This, these links will be in the description as well. And then if you want to join Pack Club and you say, hey, I think I want a pack every month or a pack every week, then you use this link here. And this link will get you signed up for Pack Club. And uh, and it's fun, you know. We have some people opening some collector boosters. Uh, yesterday we opened a um, – yesterday was the monthly, so the first we do the monthly thing. Yesterday we opened an extended art mana, uh, mana drain. So, you know, that was awesome. It was really great to see a pack club member get one of those. And, um, you know, I expect to do this more. It's going to be a lot of fun. So that's what pack club is. Um, I have some other stuff like the juice box. I'm not going to explain the juice box on here right now because nobody's close to getting it. But it's a it's a fun game. You can look at the last video to see what that is. Um, hello, the Dirtler. Welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for being here in the in the stream. I appreciate all, all who are watching it. Really, really cool to hang out with y'all. Um, okay. I hope that explained what pack club is. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, let's talk about this. Uh, let me read this tweet from Mark Rosewater. Occasionally we do what's called a deep dive where we do market research on the larger population and not through a site magic players visit. This lets us hear from magic players that we normally wouldn't, uh, that normally wouldn't allow us. What? This, this allows us to hear from magic players that we normally wouldn't, okay, and allows us to learn things about the average magic player, okay? One of the most important things it teaches us is what most magic players don't know. The average magic player doesn't know what a planeswalker is. 
that magic has a story or who I or any Wizards of the Coast employee is or am. Wow. So the big takeaway here is a couple of takeaways, actually. Uh, he goes on and you can read this tweet. I'll put the tweet in the description as well. Uh, and I'll put it in the, in the chat so you can read along if you want. I'm not going to go into all the, all the details there, but I did want to talk about this interesting thing where it says the average magic player does not know what a planeswalker is. Okay. That's weird, right? That's weird because like a lot of people don't like planeswalkers. Uh, some people just don't, especially in the, in the, in the industry, in the like competitive play and stuff, people don't necessarily like planeswalkers. It's kind of like uh, the way that they said it before is they added planeswalkers to give magic its Mickey Mouse, right? Its character. They wanted to give it a character, so they made these planeswalkers, and and they felt like that was going to be a better way to market magic. But the funny thing is, is they missed, right? Because all the people that they were trying to like give a Mickey Mouse to, they have no idea what a planeswalker is. And it makes sense. It makes sense that they don't understand what a planeswalker is because like really a planeswalker is just a person, right? There's really no difference between a planeswalker and a person. How do you know if you're looking at a box and you see, how do you know if that's a legendary creature or if it's a planeswalker? You really don't know. It's kind of like, um, you know, it's very nondescript, right? And I think they failed. They failed. Obviously they failed. They, they're, they're admitting it here, but you know, they failed in, in captivating people with this idea of a planeswalker. There's like no, there's no distinguishing mark. You know, one of the things I said on Twitter is like, it's hard to market Jedi with no lightsaber, right? Like if you just see Luke just chilling there, Luke looks like a, just a dude, just a person, right? But when you see him with a lightsaber, you're like, oh, that's a Jedi, right? Because there's some kind of distinguishing mark. And the same thing, they try to put the planeswalker symbol on things, but it's not like all the planeswalkers carry like a symbol on them that says, boom, I'm a planeswalker. Or like when you think about the, the, the empire, right? The imperial empire or whatever, you know that logo that's on all their ships and all their stuff, right? Or you know stormtroopers by their stormtrooper outfit or their armor. You know, there's nothing distinguishable about a planeswalker that that says this is not just a normal person, this is a planeswalker. So I think that's one of the reasons that Wizards has failed. The other thing is, is one of the casual formats, we just talked about Commander, right? And we just talked about um, how it's driving prices and why the demand and all this stuff. You, your Commander cannot be a planeswalker unless it specifically says. And so that's pretty interesting, right? Like, I'm not saying that Hey, let's change Commander so that you can have Planeswalker. Look at I I said something about Commander and look at my Twitter. Look at my Twitter 20 plus notifications. Look, people are blowing up about this because I said you can't have a Planeswalker as your Commander. I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying Wizards doesn't know what they're doing in this situation. They have not distinguished their brand object and and have not told the story well. And also, their best format, their biggest best-selling format, does not really care about planeswalkers. And so, like, if you want to make a, something, a, if you want to make the game about something, you should make your best format have kind of an interesting uh, thing about that, right? I think they should like just kind of like scrap planeswalkers in general, and not put so much emphasis on it, but instead build up legendary creatures, build up characters. They can have a planeswalker card, but like you don't have to be like this is a planeswalker. You could just have you know Kamal, right? Kamal's pretty awesome. Like just make Kamal the face of a thing and let let have a legend shift shift from like focusing on planeswalkers to legendary creatures. And then that takes away a lot of the burden from the Planeswalker side of things. And then kind of de-emphasize that, you know, have your legendary creatures, your chase rares and not your Planeswalkers and just kind of like have Planeswalkers more as like enchantments, you know, not like War of the Spark, <laughs> not like that. I just mean like in importance. <laughs> All right, let's catch up with chat. With regards to the comment about not knowing what the stack was, uh, I was in a tournament once and a new player tried to discard six sorcery instants to Niv Magus Elemental. He had been rolling his playgroup with it <laughs> for weeks. <laughs> it took a while for the judge to explain to him what was going on. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's things, sometimes when you pick up magic and you're not playing in, like, tournament magic, you always have things weird. Like, I, I thought, um, 
when I first started playing, ah, uh, man, I think it's Keldrin, Keldrin Dead. Keldrin Dead. Let me see if I can, if I can look this up. Uh, I thought this was a one mana three one with regenerate. Uh, I think it's Keljorin Dead. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it up on the screen so you guys can see it. But, um, yeah, I, I thought, like, I thought this was, like, the best card ever. Like, I was like, uh, I was so, um, here we go, here we go, here's a good example, I'll bring it down into the, into the screen for you, alright, let's, let's get it in there, alright, cool, um, so yeah, it's a, it's a one mana, uh, Kaljoran Dead is a one mana, uh, three one with regenerate, but I missed this part where it says, when it comes into play, sacrifice a creature, so I was playing it, I was playing it like a, um, like just a three one with regenerate for one mana. I'm like, this thing is like the best card ever, you know? Um, so yeah, planeswalkers as sagas. Okay. No, I'm not, I'm not saying change the design of planeswalkers. I'm saying change the emphasis. Look, lean into commander, make that your situation, you know, and I'm not saying make cards for commander and break the format. What I'm saying is Make your your unique commanders, your legendary creatures, those the face of your product, not the planeswalkers. And then just make the planeswalkers like regular. Planeswalkers are like touchstones uh, to connect sets. So people can see things that link sets together. I don't even think they should be that. Like, I don't even... I don't know that. Look, I sell Magic the Gathering. I buy Magic the Gathering. Obviously, I talk a lot about it. We're doing a stream right now. And like... I don't care about the Planeswalkers. I don't care about the story. And I don't know, you know, I don't know what, like, when you're saying they're touchstones, like one connects this set to connect that. I don't know that. Like, you couldn't tell me, like, if you were like, Jonathan, what is the, the Planeswalkers in Guilds of Ravnica? I'd be like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, also, I once went to a new play group where if you destroyed a permanent in response to the ability, the ability once countered, what? Oh, the ability got countered as well. Cause you could, you had to stop playing with them cause you couldn't convince them of the rules. Yeah. That's so weird, but it's things people pick up. You know, I understand. I know very few players that follow lore. That's true. Um, there are, there is a group, but I, I also do not feel compelled by any story that I've heard about magic. Like, and I didn't want to say this on Twitter cause I didn't want to make people mad and I'm not trying to just throw the story out. Right. I'm not just saying, Oh, the story's bad. I don't know if the story's bad cause I don't follow it, but also there's nothing that compels me to follow it. Like if I see a planeswalker, I'm just like, Okay, I don't really want to know the story of that planeswalker. Um, you know, the stuff that they're de that that is depicted on cards, like of what planeswalkers are doing, are usually like heroic things or or acts of war or something like that. To me, it's like, yeah, that's obviously the story, right? There's this battle going on and planeswalkers are battling. That does not incite any like that does not compel me to know what who is that planeswalker? What are they? Cuz they're just acting out like the uh, the caricature of what you would expect for a, a warrior archetype or something, you know, or, you know, some planeswalkers are protectors and they're protecting, you know, like Gideon, you know, that's the protector archetype. Like to me, those are so uh, bland and they're not interesting. So, um, you know, and maybe I'm a hard guy to sell, but I'm just saying like, I think it's super interesting that they have failed in this and we're not able to compel people with their, with their story. And what do they do now? I think they abandon it. I think they should leave the Planeswalker stuff, uh, the branding side of things to the legendary creatures, put the Planeswalkers on the back burner. You know, that'll allow you to print more uncommon Planeswalkers. Again, not like War of the Spark Planeswalkers, please. But, you know. Is your lack of interest in the story because of the quality, uh, the format in which they are delivered, the lack of hype or excitement for the story, the inconsistencies with the story. Um, well, here's the thing. It's a game. So the game can exist without the story. Like the fact I can play the game without knowing the story and never, ever know the story. So it's not, it's not required. Okay. So because it's not required, my interest is already lacking because why do I want to do something extra to play a game that I want to play? Right. So what has to happen is 
in order for me to be excited about it, I have to be compelled. I have to, somebody has to like interest me in it. Right. And they're not interesting me in it. Like I'm not interested. Like, uh, you know, they're not drawing me in by any way. And it's weird because they have my attention, right? Like I'm buying product, I'm playing the game. So they have not put anchor points to compel me into their story. And I care not about any of their characters. I do not care about any of their characters. Brother says, are you familiar with how the story in L5, uh, Legend of the Five Rings was handled? No, I don't, I, I don't know that story. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how they handled it, but I'd be interested in hearing like what, what did they do in Legend of the Five Rings? I guess Legend of the Five Rings was a successful, uh, card game. Will, I'm not a big fan of Planeswalkers until there's uh, more reanimate abilities for Planeswalkers. <laughs> Give us reanimator. I'm banning your Planeswalkers. <laughs> Does Wizards need uh, to seed mystery, mysteries and questions on cards to get players to follow up on the story? Um, I think like, I think the interesting, I think some of the experimentation stuff that they did like with the Mirrodin besieged uh, pre-release and stuff where like there's one side that is the Mirins and one side that is the, you know, Phyrexian and the fact that that mattered, like you could pick in the game. I want to be, I want a Phyrexian pack. I want a Mirin pack um, for my pre-release. I thought that was a really excellent way to bring the story in, right? What they did with the Hell Vault was kind of gimmicky um, where they had a Hell Vault where you can open it but it kind of, it put the story in your face. Um, but really, I think the best execution was, the best that I've seen them do so far was the kind of like you pick. And I think they're so stuck. I think they're they're so stuck on like the guilds because they felt like, oh, the guilds gave players identity. And now like, let's just do Ravnica all the time with the 10 guilds and people identify with the guilds. I'm Golgari, I'm is it. I do think that worked a little bit, but I think it's just like overdone. I think you have to, um, you, you can call them in like the Mirins and the Phyrexian thing, but like try to change it up a bit and draw them into a deep, rich story that can support it. Right. Um, so yeah, that's my, my thought, but I mean, I'm just a dude, man. It doesn't really matter what I say. So, um, just, it's just my thoughts, you know, uh, let's see outcomes of tournaments change the story. Oh, wow. That's insane. That seems cool. That seems cool to me because then you feel like you're fighting for something in the game, right? I'm going to change up screen just to give you some different uh, stuff to look at here. Uh, let's see. The Phyrexian thing lets you pick the next set, which was super cool, uh, whether it was rigged or not. Hey, it wasn't rigged. Don't ruin my dreams. <laughs> it wasn't rigged. That's true. That's a good. I think that's a good example of how to do the story. But again, you know, I'm not a story buff, so maybe I'm the right person because like, if I'm not a story buff, then I'm telling you what would it interest me. You already have the people who are already interested in the story, right? You don't want to draw the people who are already interested. You want to draw people who are not interested, right? It's just like me with Pack Club, right? Um, people who are subscribed, they understand what Pack Club is. They're, they're in it. I'm opening packs for them. I want to draw the people who don't know what it is, right? I want to get them interested. And I think that's what Wizards wants to do. It wants to capture the audience that is not captured. All right. Um, also, here's another question. Like, who cares? Right? Like, does Wizard want people to know what a Planeswalker is? I think it just means, like, hey, just stop spending money on Planeswalker advertising. Like, it saves you money to know that. But, like, why try to force what a Planeswalker is and spend money on it? Like, who cares? Like... Why try to force a story if a story is not required to sell a product? Isn't that weird? It's like, unless you're getting money from the story, just sell the product. Like, who cares if the story is not popular, right? Because, like, the goal is to sell the product, right? Like, if you thought, oh, we need a story to sell the product, well, evidently, you don't really need the story. <laughs> the product is selling by itself and nobody understands the story. So, like, forget about it then. De-emphasize it. Because, like, what do you gain, as a business to have the story. Got any mirrored in pure pristine talismans? Um, I used to, I don't know if I do anymore. I gave up like some of that stuff I kept for a long time thinking, Oh, this is going to go up in price. It has to right? 
And then like after years, cause I've been in this business for years after years, I'm just like, I'm sick of looking at this stuff. Let's get it out. Let's just get it out. But are there some people that are drawn by the story? Absolutely. They call them Vorthos people, right? Those people are all are definitely drawn by the story. But here's the question. It's in the business world. It's about money, right? And like the question is, are those people going to buy the product, whether they're drawn in the story or not? My guess is yes, right? I doubt that if Wizards de-emphasize the story, the, the Vorthoses are going to stop buying the, the product. I think they will still buy the product. They may not make content for the product, um, but they're like, who cares, right? Like they're still going to pay. They're still going to buy it. Kids. I just don't think that story is, <laughs> it's not really kid centric, right? There's no cartoon on Saturday morning. Not that Saturday morning cartoons is a thing anymore. You know, I'm dating myself with that, but like there is like, where are the kids and where like, we should see the magic where the kids are, right? There should be like, people training to be planeswalkers, just like there's people training, like Ash is trained to be a Pokemon master. There should be someone training to be a legend or training to be a, you know, a planeswalker, but there's no, there's no thing, right? There's no, there, like if they wanted to draw the kids, they're not drawing the kids in my opinion, right? They're, they're not doing a good job of that because my kids don't know anything about magic. My kids know about Minecraft. They know about Pokemon, they don't know anything about magic. And I, I, I sell it. I like, there's product coming through the house all the time and they have no idea. Like they know it's the thing I sell, but they don't, they don't know. Right. Like personally, I don't see the fascination with dressing up as characters, but there are people who love to do it. And I think that, um, there are also some people that play magic because they love the story and it's what keeps them hooked. No, sure. Um, by the way, I don't want to denigrate any subculture within magic, right? Because there's multiple subcultures. There's like the magic finance subculture. I came out of that subculture. Um, you know, there is the, uh, the, the, uh, Vorthos, the people who love the story and the artwork. And then there's also these, uh, cosplayers, right. Who spend a lot of time in building these outfits and, and, uh, really meticulously redesigning these things. And then, and then embodying that character, right? Like, to me, I don't want to denigrate any of the work or love or passion that goes into that stuff. I think it's great that those things exist, but let's put on the corporate hat, right? And let's look at it from a corporate standpoint. Why do they do these deep dives? I think they do the deep dive because these these kind of deep dives cost money, right? They cost money to get in these places where magic players are not and then get the information. And so... um. So like the thing is, is that if you're going to spend money, you're spending it so that you can be more profitable. And my question, if I'm putting the corporate hat on is how do these different things make us profitable? How do the Vorthos or the people who care about story make us profitable enough to put the money that we put into it, right? Now the cosplayers might be worth it enough, right? From a corporate standpoint, if I'm thinking like a corporate guy and I'm on a board and I'm looking at these different things that are going on in the subcultures, I'm thinking, man, having these cosplayers out there is a representation of the brand and they're doing it out of passion and love. They're spreading the word. It's like word of mouth advertising, which I love. Um, you can denigrate magic finance all you want. They deserve it. <laughs> that's a, that's a comment from brother. Um, yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, you know, there has, you know, that's one of the things is magic kind of magic finance has gotten, um, a really bad name. Um, I think, uh, you know, some of that is due to just, uh, the way that some of the people in the, in that kind of subculture act, um, it rubs people the wrong way. It makes you feel like you're spending more on a hobby that you don't want to. They kind of feel like the enemy. I understand that. I totally understand. Um, but I, I don't want to denigrate them either because, you know, everyone's just trying to enjoy the hobby like they like they best identify it with it, you know. So I, I identify with Magic Finance for a long time. So. And that's because I love the business side of things, you know, I love the buying and selling. All right. Um Okay, so let's uh, let's open some packs. I think we're gonna open some packs, and then um, I'm gonna open a couple of packs of Commander Legends. 
I appreciate everybody who's here listening, and uh, this has been great. I think it's been a great little talk. If you want to get some more feedback in, make sure that you shoot it into the chat, and I'll read it out, and we'll talk about it. Um, if anybody wants to purchase a pack, again, no pressure to do so, but if you want to do that, uh, you can do that in this link here. Um, buy a pack. Uh, there you go. And, uh, you know, if you if you want to hang out after the stream, you can do that in my Discord. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug those two things right now, my Discord and my um, the packs. So if you want to buy a pack, if you do buy a pack, let me know in chat so that I can open it for you. All right. Uh, let's let's go. Let's do a let's do a uh, let's do a Commander Legends pack. And if we if we open something like, you know, Vampiric Tutor, Lotus, um, if we open like one of the good things, right? If we do that, then, um, then I'll do, I'll do something from the juice box. I'll give away something from the juice box. So if we, if we open really well in these commander legends packs, then, uh, then I'll get, do a giveaway. So, so let's hope, let's hope for, for, so this pack is for me. I'm going to open it up. Hopefully we hit like a Lotus or something and then we can, we can juice box it up. Also, I don't want to like go buy these like commons because like there's good commons in there like you know command tower foundry inspector is okay um but like there's some good stuff all right we're on, on commons all right austere command that's a nice hit that's a nice hit not nice enough for juice box but it is nice we got a couple of commanders and then a foil spark harvest that pack was okay that pack was okay i think we could do better i think we can do better Let's get let's get another one here. Open up another Commander Legends pack. I'm struggling with it. Here we go. Here we go. That just shows you that it's sealed. It's sealed. Okay. Austere command. Do 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 do. Come on. Fire Diamond. One of those good commons. I like having those in the common slot. What are we going to hit? Oh, Court of Grace. We missed. We missed. Lousy packs. That's okay. You know what that means? That means that those in Pack Club, I took the bullet. I took the bullet for you uh, in Pack Club uh, because I took the bad packs. Okay, I took the bad packs. Here's what we're going to do. We won't do anything out of the juice box, but we will do a giveaway of this Zendikar Rising pack. And so I'm going to start the giveaway here. I'm just going to fire up Moobot. And then, uh, and then we'll give, we'll give that away. You all hung out and heard me talk about all these, um, you listen to me talk about all this stuff. So why not, why not do a little bit of, do a little bit of something because you did that. So, all right. Uh, so the giveaway, let's start it. And here's how you enter the giveaway. Okay. You put exclamation point, give me. All right. So exclamation point, give me. And the, the person who wins is going to win what's inside this pack, okay? So you're going to win what's inside. And the way that these packs work is I always send out, I send out the, the good stuff. So, like, if there's a rare, a foil, an uncommon, I'll send that stuff out. The commons I don't send. I need to save on shipping, so I don't send that stuff, okay? But, um, but we'll open up this pack. And, uh, and I'll send you the goodies. And the same thing goes for Pack Club. If you subscribe to Pack Club, you're going to get the good stuff. You're not going to get the commons and stuff. Unless you order an epic pack, which is a collector's pack, then you get everything. Because for that price, you should get everything. My goodness. All right. All right. So we got a couple Commander Legends packs to be opened as well. So sweet. Thank you for purchasing those. It uh, makes the stream more interesting. So good deal. And those of you on YouTube, you know, if you're done with the topics, you can, you know, you can just hit that like button and then just take off. I mean, we're just going to be opening packs here. Oh, raising, raising Charex. No, this is actually a cool card. This is actually a cool card and a pretty cool, pretty cool mountain. Okay. So the winner is going to get a Charex, the Raging Isle, a mountain. And then eh, is there anything good in here that we can throw in with it? Uh I'll probably throw in this thing because I this is like it's nice to have these you know these are nice so all right let's see who won we have eight entries let's let's see who won I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off the entries in 30 seconds so when you're hearing this 
It's probably done. It's probably done. Let's see. What's up, Brandon? Man, you know, it makes me just want to hang out on stream all day when I see my friends like Brandon and Will and people like Brother and Derek coming over here. It's just great. Thanks for being here, guys. All right, we're going to have to draw another one. Here we go. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Rigged. Rigged. <laughs> so I'll just send this. I'll send this. Uh, I'll send this with the other stuff. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. Um, all right, let me check out. Let me check out the. Uh, I'm gonna check out the store or orders, orders, and then we'll get a couple packs open for you. Give me. You were a little bit late there with that one, buddy. A little bit late. Um, all right. Let's open a couple Commander Legends. You saw that I pretty much whiffed. I whiffed on these packs. Um, so. These two packs, let me let me let me label them here. These are for Chris. We'll get these packs labeled so that we don't mix them up. We don't want to mix them up with my packs. <laughs> All right. There's one, and then I'll label this one here. All right, let's let's dig in. I also need smaller. I need smaller. Uh, Post-it notes, man. Those things are... Look at how big that thing is. That's huge. All right. Let's get into this pack. This is Chris's back. Basically, since Young Wolf was printed. <laughs> Brandon has been around forever. Brandon was my partner in my first business of LegitMTG.com. I got to thank Brandon for his hard work and uh, just helping me get that business off the ground. He's He's been a great friend to me and, uh, you know... It's been cool having him in my life. So thank you, Brandon. You've been around for a while, for a minute, as they like to say. All right. We hit some uncommons. Burnished Heart. Nice one. Nice one, Chris. I like this card. This used to be a rare. We should count it as a rare in the pack. All right. We got Laboratory Drudge. Laboratory Drudge as your rare. Ooh, we got a Rygroth as, your, uh, as one of your commanders. And a Kanji. And let's see what your foil is. All right. Ardent. Underrated commander, in my opinion. Not a bad pack. Not a bad pack with the with the burnished heart. I think we could do better, though. I think we can do better. All right. Come on, Lotus. You know, if we open a Lotus, we open a we open a Vampire Tutor. You know, it's like makes up for everything. All right, this is Chris's second pack. Second pack. Come on. Hopefully we can hit it big. The silence. Oh, this is a popper common. The suspense is killing me. Oh, another this I think this is good in popper, right? Mana drain, you want to hit the mana drain? Is that is that what you're calling? Brothers calling a mana drain. Alright. Uncommons. Court of Ire. I kinda like that card. It's okay. Here's your your lead your uh, commanders. Elf ball. Omen speaker. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. I think you missed. I think you missed on these packs. But I have good news for you. All right, you missed. You missed on these packs. But here's what I'm gonna do. Because because I don't like it when people miss. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a drink out of the juice box. All right. Here is the juice box right here. All right, let's see if we can move this over. Let's make some room for the juice box. All right, so let me explain. Let me explain what this is. I'm gonna give you a little. I'm gonna give you a little hit out of this. All right. So the way that the juice box works is we're gonna shuffle this up. Okay. We're gonna shuffle. There's a. There's about 90 cards here. Okay. And there's a bunch of different stuff in there. Okay. A lot of. Uh, a lot of like etch foils. Uh, extended art, you know, cool stuff, right? Uh, there's also one of those doubling season. See, this is the big hit, right? Everyone wants to hit the big hit out of the thing. There's also a, um, you know, Oster Command, lots of commander staples, cool stuff, uh, you know, uh, whatever that is. Uh, but also, also, this is cool too. This is cool too. I want to show you. All right, there it is. The Booster Tutor. If you hit a Booster Tutor, we're going to open another pack and you're going to get the best card 
out of that pack. All right. But here, let's shuffle this up. What are you going to get out of the juice box? I think your packs were pretty bad. I'm going to be honest. Let's uh, let's get the juice box shuffled up here, and then we're going to pull. This is some high-end juice. More like sparkling apple cider. Yeah, this is the real deal. You know, this is not... This is not a Capri Sun juice box, all right? This is the real deal. All right, let's get this. Let's see what you hit. All right, there it is. That card on top. That card is going to be it. Ready? This is your juice box hit. All right, you got a Mythos of, of Snapdax. All right, you got a, it's an extended art, right? Extended art. So sweet, sweet. No doubling season, but that just means that the doubling season is there for somebody else to get out of the juice box. All right, I'll put these with your packs. Thank you so much for purchasing those packs. Uh, that was fun. Uh, and it, it gives you a little bit of juice, you know, a little bit of juice on your packs. You know, there's no feel bads here. You got a little bit extra and, you know, that's cool. And the doubling season lives to see another day, another day. All right. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to check the, I'm going to check the orders. If there's no more packs, then we'll get, um, you know, we'll get going. We'll get going. What just happened? I, uh, all right. All right. Let's check them out. Um, okay. That's it for packs. It looks like everything is good. So I think it's time to end the stream. I think it's time to end the stream. I think we had a great conversation. We opened some nice packs and, um, yeah, it was fun. So next week I'll be back. Okay. So Wednesday, Wednesday is when I do this. Wednesdays at seven is when I open the pack club packs. Okay. And, um, if you want to join pack club again, I'll put that in here. Um, Usually the juice box is only for pack club members, but sometimes, you know, when you really whiff, then I'm feeling generous and I'll hook it up. So here's that. And, um, and I'll be back Wednesday. So try to put that in your calendar or whatever. I hope to see you back here. We'll talk about some more magic weekly. We'll open up some packs and then, uh, and then monthly on the first, we're going to do the big, the big, uh, pack club opening where we'll see a lot of collector boosters and some other cool stuff. So I, Hope everybody stays safe out there. Uh, thank you so much for, for being here. And again, um, stay safe. I'll catch you guys next time. Those who are watching YouTube, if you're still here, put something in the comments. Let me know that you're still here. Have a great night, Jen. Bye-bye.